What's up, everybody? Time for our Wednesday high five. Jared Sandler here with you. Thanks for hanging out. We're going to kick things off with something we do every Wednesday, and that is our NFL top five. But then we got to get into the NBA. It started last night. The Mavs kick off tonight. The NBA in earnest really gets going here this evening. Exciting times on the hardwood. But let's start with the NFL top five. Number one, unchanged the Kansas City Chiefs. They got tested defensively. Uh, or their offense got tested by a great defense in the Saints and still were able to put up 30-plus, even though uh, they had a punt more than any other time in the game this year. Uh, I thought it was an impressive road victory. The Chiefs, number one. The Packers are number two. They're something a little bit unimpressive about the way they've gone about things here recently, but they're going to hold it number two. The Bills at number three. Hey, you know, recently we are talking about a Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers MVP discussion. Josh Allen is saying, hey, uh, excuse me, don't forget about me. I deserve to be in there, and he undoubtedly does. Uh, the Bills defensively aren't as good this year as last year, but they're starting to get things going back in the right direction. Uh, that's a really balanced offense attack with uh, some really good offensive weapons, which we haven't really been able to say much about the Bills here in recent years. Bills are number three. Number four, the Tennessee Titans. Another team defensively not as good this year as they were last year, but they've got the ability to – control the clock they got the ability to control the ball with Derrick Henry plus Ryan Tannehill is a really good quarterback is he uh, Patrick Mahomes Aaron Rodgers Josh Allen level uh, no he's not although he's put together long stretches where his numbers have been quite impressive AJ Brown and Corey Davis a really good one-two punch uh, at the receiver position and they got some playmakers defensively uh, they just got to adopt the bend don't break approach uh, but they're a team I think that can beat the Chiefs because they got the ability to control the ball. Unlike what my number five team did uh, this past Sunday, the, the Saints. The Saints are number five for me because everything to me other than their quarterback is Super Bowl caliber. Their quarterback is not. As a matter of fact, I'm not so sure, as crazy as this is, that their best option if they want to go to a Super Bowl and win it is it Taysom Hill. Uh, I don't think that Taysom Hill over the next five years is maybe going to be that guy, but I think Taysom Hill brings a set of skills to that position that first time teams are seeing him on an every down basis in that role could give them problems. Same way that teams had no clue how to deal with the Wildcat years ago. And maybe there's a little bit of a Lamar Jackson part of this conversation from last year to this year. Uh, whatever the case, Drew Brees' inability to throw the ball downfield is an issue. Uh, and it's the reason why the Saints lost. Uh, all the three and outs early on in the game gave the Chiefs a ton of possessions, allowed them to control the clock. That's why they won, despite the fact that the Saints defensively gave the Chiefs more problems than any other team in the NFL this year. But because all that they're missing is that quarterback, and I think that they've got the ability, even if it's a combo platter of Breeze and Hill, to work it out, uh, I, I think that uh, I, I, I'm going to still put them in there at number five. No Steelers, uh, second straight week, they've been out. Seahawks are knocking on the door. Bucks are knocking on the door. All right, uh, we get to the NBA number two. Let's start with the Dallas Mavericks. They begin tonight against the Suns. By the way, Mavs haven't played the Suns very well recently, and uh, the Suns are a good team. That's a playoff team this year. It'll be a fun season opening matchup before the Mavs play the Lakers. Mavs could start the season 0-2. That's a very realistic possibility. I still think this is a top four team in the Western Conference. Some of the things that that stun, uh, stand out to me about the Mavs, obviously there's the Luka component. What's the growth going to be like? For me, I'm looking at the not just the three-point percentage, but the shot selection. This is a guy who's going to always be, to some degree, I think a volume shooter. Uh, you know, he, that, that efficiency we saw from Dirk isn't necessarily going to be the same with Luca, but I need to see that three point percentage go up. I need to see a 33 or a 34, and that's going to make, I think his late game decision making a little bit better, uh, defensively. A lot of the talk has been how this Mavs team is going to be better defensively. Don't be surprised if it takes some time when you got new bodies, new people, there's a, there, there's an adjustment period, uh, this, this defense will be better. It might not be better right away. It might take them a month to kind of click and hit their stride, but the defense will be better. The additions of guys like Richardson and Johnson and then the young kids that they brought in will make a difference. I promise you that. Uh, I think this is a big year to learn about Kristaps Porzingis. Could the Mavs somehow win an NBA championship this year? It's possible. Yeah. I mean, listen, the year the Raptors won it, it's not like everyone was saying the Raptors were going to win the title. The Mavs have that that transcendent type player that can give them that sort of an opportunity. But I don't think any of us are going into this year thinking, well, if the Mavs don't win a championship, it's a huge disappointment. 
it's important that the Mavs learn what they have in Kristaps Porzingis. I know that the contract is the contract, but if they got to move on because this guy's never going to be right, then they got to do it now and not waste the Luka years. They got to do it now. They got to learn. Is Kristaps a guy you can rely on or not? That's something that stands out to me. And I'm also excited to see how this roster template comes into form. Uh, you know, you're not always going to have the same exact pieces, but maybe we start to see with the addition of some more toughness and defense, the subtraction of guys who can only shoot the three. And that's about it. Uh, you're going to see maybe that template of the roster you're going to create around Luca come into form. And then you learn what pieces, what players you can kind of add, improve upon, et cetera. Those are the things that jump out to me. Number three. Uh, let's get to NBA teams. I like NBA teams. I don't like, I got three. I like three. I don't like these aren't necessarily the three best teams and the three worst teams. These are teams that maybe I think are underrated and overrated. Let's start with the teams I think are underrated. I already mentioned one of them, the Phoenix suns. I think that's a really good group adding Chris Paul. Listen, we we've seen this before. Chris Paul over the long period of time, maybe isn't the best fit because he wears out his welcome, but first year, I think it'll be great. Devin Booker, Deandre Ayton. That's a really good combo. You got TJ Warren as well. The Suns are a good team. That's a playoff team in the tough Western conference. I also really like Portland. Uh, the thing with Portland is their health. Listen, I'm not going to go as far as Charles Barkley and say, Hey, hundred thousand dollars on Portland to come out of the West. I don't like him that much, but I do think that's a really good team, but health is a the key there. Zach Collins health is going to be really important. I think adding in his cancer is huge for this team. Obviously their backcourt of Lillard and McCollum is pretty significant. They got a guy to stretch the floor at Rodney hood. This is a team that can do a lot of things. Well, uh, I think last year they got a little bit by the health part of the, the equation, but I do think this is a really good team. Uh, and in that, you know, it seems like everyone thinks the Lakers are number one and there's a group of number two. Uh, Portland absolutely is in that group and they might be in the, the top part of that group. That includes also, you know, the Clippers, the Mavericks, the Jazz, the Nuggets, uh, and perhaps the Golden State Warriors. Let's not take one game and, and write off the Warriors just yet. I also really like Memphis. Uh, I think Memphis is a playoff team this year. Don't know that they're a favorite to make the playoffs in Vegas. I really like the way that roster is constructed. First of all, I love John Morant, love Jaron Jackson. And then I think a guy like uh, DeAnthony Melton is a perfect kind of grindhouse type guy for that Memphis team. Plus, I really like Taylor Jenkins. I think he's one of the best coaches uh, that people don't talk about much in the NBA. The three teams I don't like as much, the Rockets, and maybe some people are really starting to sour on them. Uh, just, you know, especially if they trade James Harden, but that's a, a team in shambles. I feel bad for Steven Silas. I, I don't know. Does he have the, uh, does he have what it takes to deal with that, that situation? Because that's a team that might be rebuilding really quickly. I'm, I'm out on the Rockets. Don't think even if James Harden stays, I think they're kind of a mess. Uh, the 76ers to me, I think are going to be okay with Daryl Morey. I think we saw what Daryl Morey did with Houston. He made them legitimate contenders and they were an over 700 from the perimeter away from possibly beating the Warriors a few years ago and winning a title. Uh, you know, I think you make a case. They were the best team of the NBA that year, but Daryl Morey is, is playing chess with checkers pieces right now uh, with guys like Ben Simmons, who, uh, you know, can't shoot, don't want to shoot, whatever. He's added guys like Seth Curry who are going to help stretch things out, but I think it might take a year. So I don't look at the 76ers as a title threat. I look at them as a good team of the East. I think they're a year away from Daryl Morey really getting his hands on that. And then the other team, the Pacers, it just seems like the Pacers are kind of in flux. Guys like Miles Turner and, and Victor Oladipo, are they going to be here long-term or not? You know, what's what's the worth here? I, 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 I've, I've liked the Pacers the last few years. They're a team I think that might underachieve. I just think they got some guys who you're not quite sure what their direction is going to be. And maybe a guy like Victor Oladipo gets traded uh, before the year's up, free agency looming. Uh, some random NBA thoughts. So we go to number four here on our high five. LeBron James' 18th year. It's unbelievable what this guy's done. 18th season, more playoff games than anyone else. The mileage, the physicality, still playing at a remarkably high level. Uh, we can save the Jordan LeBron debates for another time. They happen all the time. Uh, but, you know, this is not a, a, a shot at anyone, but no one else in sports has done what LeBron's done for the longevity and the high level. I and mean, it's absolutely remarkable. Uh, Bam Adebayo, this is going to be his coming out party. I think he was starting to open the door last year. He's going to show he's a top 10 player in the NBA. I mentioned Taylor Jenkins. I think he's a coach who's going to get a lot more love when this year's done, the coaching job he does. Uh, Brooklyn, this is a boomer bust team. Uh, Kyrie is a boomer bust player. Can he bottle up for a year and behave and not cause too many problems? If he can, that's a really talented group. I mean, when you got Karis LeVert, who's like, to some degree, like an afterthought, uh, that that's an impressive group with Durant and Kyrie. 
Uh, you know, they got depth down low. They got depth in the backcourt, depth in the middle. It's just a matter of whether Kyrie drives that ship off the uh, – drive that train off the tracks because he's got that ability. He's a guy, I think, that ever since he's left Cleveland, he's made teams worse, not better. Uh, I, I think another thing, the impact of the offseason – I have a really tough time believing the Lakers are winning the title because they're an older team. They're a team that's dealt with injuries. They don't have the depth that I think you might need this year with a shortened off season. I don't know what team I think is better than them because I am a LeBron Stan. And uh, you know, I do think right now they're the best team, but the off season, the lack thereof, the, the short off season is going to impact multiple teams. Uh, it's just a matter of who and, and how, you know, is it going to be uh, the, the young guys, who didn't know how to handle it because the maturity is not there. It's going to be the older guys because of the body or how are teams maybe going to adjust to the regular season a little bit differently because of it. The Lakers are a team that's going to have to keep them in mind, keep, keep, uh, keep that in mind. And then finally uh, I mentioned the Daryl Morey impact. I'm excited to see how that plays itself out because Daryl Morey uh, is not afraid to do some interesting things. I don't think it's something that can happen overnight in Philadelphia, but I do think Philadelphia is going to take one step back this year to take three step for, uh, three steps forwards ne- uh, next year. Last thing here, we're going to go back to the gridiron number five. I hate that the NFL draft system is constructed in a way where a, a positive achievement by the team can be such a, a catastrophe for the organization. I hate that the Jets winning and doing something great and, and players and coaches doing what they're supposed to do. And that's fight and compete is going to penalize that franchise because I don't think any of the quarterbacks other than Trevor Lawrence are franchise caliber quarterbacks. I don't believe in Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, or Trey Lance. I don't, I think Trey, uh, Trevor Lawrence is in a class by himself and they're going to miss out on that unless Jacksonville wins a game. One of these last two weeks, I wish there was a better way. Is it a lottery? Is it some sort of a, a play in? I, I don't know. But I, I, I don't think it's fair for players or coaches to be uh, p- penalized, I guess, for, for trying to win. The goal should be to compete, to want to compete. And, and I'm wondering if maybe it's not time with the importance of the quarterback position. The, the quarterback position is more important now than ever before. With how much more people are passing, how much more reliance there is on the quarterback now than, you know, in the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. That's why this all of a sudden to me is more of an issue. And I think it's time the NFL at least starts to have conversations on whether or not they need to or should make a change. There you go. That's our Wednesday high five. Uh, I'll talk to you later.